So I'm, I had some I had some good conversations during the break um, and wondering if uh, anyone would like to share about uh, the work that they may be doing in, um, in their uh, areas uh, or if there's anybody who has any, any questions. I know that you were telling me uh, about the project that you have in your high school, and maybe you would like to describe it a little bit to uh, to the rest of the group, okay? Desde Secretaría de Educación, pues eh, este año han iniciado seis instituciones de educación eh, públicas en un proceso que es eh, en el que se está migrando de un modelo de educación de seis horas a un modelo de educación de nueve horas. Eh, por directrices del ministerio, entonces eh, queremos que esas tres horas adicionales se utilicen para el desarrollo de proyectos y enfatizar en la metodología STEM, pero acá en Medellín la llamamos STEAM porque le hemos agregado la A de Arts. Eh, entonces, eh, es, eh, la experiencia que hemos tenido, hay dos instituciones que ya llevan una trayectoria de cinco años con ese modelo y es extraordinario, realmente es diferente eh, los niveles académicos que alcanzan los estudiantes en matemáticas y en ciencias. Mm, sin embargo, pues estamos, es un trabajo incipiente, estamos empezando, ¿cierto? Y pues eh, nosotros como Secretaría de Educación sí estaríamos muy interesados en En, en acceder a, no sé si ustedes ya tienen formalmente ese programa de certificación en competencias STEM para maestros. Eh, entonces, quisiera, si nos puedes hablar un poquito de ese programa eh, de certificación para maestros. We, we have, uh, I, I, I only spoke about I only spoke uh, about a couple of things that we are doing, but we also know that these are individual projects and we want to make them much more sustainable and we want to bring them up to scale. So we, there are a couple of things that we have done. We have worked with the Indiana Department of Education to establish a uh, framework for what is a STEM school. So uh, you heard me talk about how I believe it is very important for, um, for STEM to be embedded in the very fabric of the classroom. And so we have established, the state has agreed and they have established a, um, a series of steps and levels in terms of what it means to actually uh, call yourself a STEM school. So that is one thing that we have done. The second thing is that last year we began a series of STEM transformation, STEM school transformation workshops. And we held retreats with um, small teams of individuals from different school corporations. And uh, together they started, uh, we, uh, talked to them and worked with them in terms of what it means to be a STEM school and help them begin the process of transforming themselves to become STEM schools. So we're looking at what it means at the state level to be, um, to call yourself a true STEM school. Then we're also working to try to help schools think about how they can make the change to a STEM school. The, the next thing that we are doing, and we're still in the process now of putting it together, but it is almost ready to go, is that we have created three certificate programs in integrated STEM education. Two of them are at, uh, at, they are at the undergraduate, there's one that is at the undergraduate level, two that are at the graduate level, and it's integrated STEM education at the, uh, for the early grades, 
and then integrated STEM education at the high school level. Um, we have had a group of, well, let me, let me backtrack just a second. About three years ago, we convinced the university administration that it was, that this was an important initiative to move forward. Um, and we were able to partner uh, with um, four other colleges on campus, um, agriculture, technology, science, and engineering on what we called cluster hires. And these are individuals who have um, their primary expertise in one of those colleges, uh, but all of them have either a, 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 a majority appointment in the College of Education or a minority appointment in the College of Education. And this was done for the purpose of uh, having a focused group of faculty who were passionate about working in this area. So we essentially brought a group of people together who would work specifically on this area. What we have often found is that when we have joint appointments, um, sometimes it's very difficult for those faculty because they, um, they tend to be pulled either in the direction of one, uh, one of the departments or the other department. So every one of the, uh, the hires not only has a joint appointment, but they have some dedicated time to one of our STEM centers so that they can come together and they can work collaboratively around this area. I tell that to you because it is this group that has developed the certificate programs. They have um, developed together, working together from all of these different areas. They have developed the courses. They have piloted the courses. And they have created the program, which hopefully will be implemented very shortly. Yeah. One of the troubles for implementing this kind of programs uh, is the, the investment that, that the government has to yeah. make on the improving the labs of the school, isn't it? So how do you? face this kind of trouble there. I, I guess it's a trouble there too. It, it always, it, I think this is always one of the, the things that you have to weigh. Um, the, um, we have tried to leverage the resources that we have. Um, for me, it's a gift to be on a campus such as Purdue because um, it lives and breathes STEM. And so it's very natural for us to be able to work in that space. Um, there are many people who are interested in this. Um, the schools recognize that this is important. They also realize that they need to be doing something a little different. And so the way we have structured some of these initiatives is that it does not take um, a lot of resources from either the schools or from the college, um, but yet there are continuing opportunities to interact with each other. It's, but it's not a perfect system by any means. Es una pregunta para, para los dos. Um, Él la preguntaba si había algún tipo de certificación y mi pregunta va si durante los programas de, de verano que tienen, tienen alguno dirigido a docentes. Um, at the present time, um, what we have done is to... Um, I think the closest thing that we have done is, the pro is what I uh, described to you a little bit earlier, and that is um, we brought teachers from Columbia to come to a program and to work with our teachers. It did not result in a certificate, it did not result in a degree, but it did result in the transfer of knowledge. 
we um, are always open. Uh, no, I should, I should correct myself. The other uh, thing that we have done is the SLED pro program, the Science Learning Through Engineering Design, um, has for the past five years held uh, teacher workshops um, where the teachers come to campus and they spend time learning the techniques and developing lesson plans that they can then go and use in their classrooms. So that, yes, that is something that is specifically designed for teachers. Y tú nos decías que habían dos instituciones que tenían ya tradición en ese trabajo dentro de la ciudad de Medellín y otras, otras cuatro que están implementando nuevas. ¿Cuáles son esas dos y cómo van con las cuatro nuevas? Bueno, las dos instituciones que ya llevan cinco años de tradición con el modelo STEM son Juan María Céspedes, que es un colegio público. Ese colegio tiene un grado, eh, perdón, un grupo por cada grado que está en jornada extendida. Ellos están hasta las cuatro y todo, lo, por ejemplo, en Juan María Céspedes hay seis cestos, uno de esos cestos es, estudia hasta las cuatro, los otros cinco salen a las doce y cuarenta y cinco, como es el horario tradicional, eh, y así con cada grado de sexto a un décimo, ¿cierto? Un solo grupo por la capacidad, por los laboratorios, por los profes, porque no hay recursos para tener todo en ese modelo. Ese colegio Juan María Céspedes y el colegio Loyola para la Ciencia y la Innovación, que es un colegio nuevo, un colegio piloto, sin embargo en el colegio Loyola sí no tienen horario extendido, pero allá sí se ha venido trabajando con un modelo STEM. ¿cierto? Los otros colegios eh, que han ingresado ahora eh, está el, el consejo, está en proceso pero no ha arrancado, está el eh, Javier Alondoño, está el San Benito, que es un colegio nuevo que construyeron por la Universidad San Buenaventura, por ese ladito por la minorista, está el colegio La Normal Superior, que queda por Buenos Aires arriba, y el San José Obrero, que queda en Prado, ¿cómo se llama? Prado, por allá arriba. Esas instituciones son las que este año han migrado, pero en los planes del ministerio es que esos, estos son, arrancamos con esta, pero que a corto plazo todas las instituciones hayan migrado a ese modelo y que ese espacio adicional no se dicte la clase tradicional de matemáticas ni la clase tradicional de ciencias, que no se haga más de lo mismo, sino que se trabaje con un modelo que ellos lo llaman ejecución de proyectos. Acá en Medellín sí hemos enfatizado mucho, particularmente en Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics. Um, I have a question, and it's, it's this. When we're talking about STEM education, we're talking about how to, uh, about different ways of thinking uh, for, uh, for the students in all grades, not only in higher education, but at high school, at middle school. So at the universities, we use, we tend to, to say that Some of the problems that we have with our students are because of the, uh, the uh, lack of competences that they have from high school. When we are, uh, if, if we start working with STEM education in high school, uh, I think that at the universities we will need to rethink how we teach engineering because uh, the idea is that uh, two, two, two things. First, that the students that we will have in engineering, they will have uh, at least the basic skills for STEM, but not only those, all other things. You were talking about bilingual um, education and, and many other things that they will have, and uh, we will uh, find that our students have a different level But we also will find that students f uh, in other majors, they will have um, STEM. Think about this problem from the major's point of view. If the, we will have to change majors, maybe majors will disappear in the future. Or what do you think about that? I think it's a good problem to have uh, because I think we are looking at potentially 
having students come with the kinds of skills that we are always hearing our professors and the business world saying this is what they need. And wouldn't it be wonderful to actually have these students come with those skills and then to be able to take learning to a higher level. I don't know that I have the answer to your question, but it seems to me that what will be really important is that um, we don't look at the continuum of learning as only being kindergarten to through high school stop and then university. I think we need to be looking at from kindergarten all the way through university and making sure that we are, and you know, we always hear the criticism that universities are an ivory tower. Um, I think we need to make sure that we are staying in touch with the schools and we're staying in touch with the kind of learning and needs that are coming through and that we have a good understanding of where students are at when they actually come to university and so that we are prepared to, um, to work with them at the level that they, come, that, that they come here or they come to any university with. It may be that, um, and I'm not sure how students are permitted to take different courses here. Um, in the United States, it varies by university. Some universities require placement tests to go into higher level courses. Others are much more flexible. Uh, but I think that there will need to be a way to help students identify and communicate um, where they are at, um, to be able to use multiple sources of information and not just in the United States, it's often the SAT score, which has, I think, um, it, variable predictive validity uh, for different majors. So I think that we need to find a better way to use different uh, multiple sources of information to be able to, for us to be able to um, uh, develop a, uh, a process to better uh, create better pathways for students. Antes que el modelo, ¿cuál es el plan de estudios o el currículo? para los maestros que van a impartir ese modelo, para sus estudiantes, los estudiantes de la Facultad de Educación, ¿cuál es el plan con ellos, el currículo? ¿Cómo los preparan para que ellos cuando se gradúen sean idóneos en ese modelo? ¿Puedes uh, 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 maybe tell me a little bit more about your question? Formador, soy formador de formadores, profesor de maestros. Si yo los quiero, ¿qué currículo, cuál es el plan de estudios que ustedes ejecutan con estos futuros maestros? Para que estén preparados para eh, ir a las escuelas a impartir el modelo STEM. So, uh, probably uh, one of the uh, clearest uh, uh, ways that that is being done right now is through the SLED program, the Science Learning Through Engineering Design program. That program has actually developed in, um, some integrated STEM courses that students take uh, as they are going through their program of study. It, uh, in that class, uh, they, um, the techniques are modeled for the students and they also read about and go through the process themselves of, of that I described earlier, the reflection, the discovery, the evaluation, et cetera. And so it's a process that they learn how to do by doing it themselves. Bueno, entonces, es, es como una propuesta de currículo práctico si hablamos de, de un autor como Stein, un práctico, es aprendiendo, es haciendo y pasando por el proceso muchas veces que ellos lo pueden replicar. Profe, ¿me recuerda su nombre? 
Alexander, eh, tú eres de la Universidad de Antioquia, ¿cierto? Y de la Universidad Cooperativa. ¿Tienen en este momento cualquiera de las dos universidades eh, programas de este tipo para formación de futuros docentes en, en todo el tema de STEM? En la Antioquia no, pero es algo que nos ha inquietado ya por un ratico. En la Universidad Cooperativa se está trabajando en Envigado en la jornada complementaria, lo mismo que decía el profe. Eh, y este es un modelo que no es disciplinar. O sea, no es ir a dar clase de matemáticas, de física, de química, no, sino que es integrador y aleja un poquito a los muchachos de eso, del tablero y de la tiza y de, y de, lo, y de lo disciplinar en la escuela, por eso es tan llamativo Cuando, y además eh, integra diferentes áreas, eh, esa es la razón por la que estoy aquí, ¿cierto? porque quería escuchar de primera mano de un especialista este modelo. Entonces, eh, es Quisiéramos de pronto escuchar eh, dentro del público, tenemos profesores que trabajan directamente en esas áreas, en instituciones educativas del municipio de, de Itagüí. Quisiéramos que alguno de los compañeros de Itagüí nos compartiese las prácticas que hoy desarrollan en esta línea a partir de STEM. Eh, yo soy docente de la institución educativa Juan Nepomuceno Cadavid del municipio de Itagüí, eh, junto con la profesora Paula Riva de Neira, que en estos momentos está fuera del país, lideramos el proyecto de investigación Pollux. El proyecto de investigación Pollux es un proyecto que lo que pretende es enamorar a los muchachos de los grados sexto a once. Estamos pensando también en trabajar con los muchachos de cuarto y quinto, estamos todavía esbozándolo. Y hemos, la idea es enamorarlos de la investigación y el conocimiento a través de la robótica. Hemos tenido la oportunidad de participar en varios campeonatos regionales, nacionales e internacionales. Hemos ido a Phoenix, Arizona y estuvimos ahorita en, en abril en Nuevo México, Albuquerque. Participando en Phoenix, estuvimos en la competencia en el campeonato mundial BEX eh, y ahorita en abril en Albuquerque estuvimos en Roborrey. ¿Qué hemos podido observar con Vex? Que Vex eh, está siendo acompañado por la Universidad Carnegie Mellon. Eh, también hemos, hemos participado de la FLL First Lego League. Y, y nos ha parecido muy interesante, muy bonito, eh, cómo, por ejemplo, en Vex, en Vex cuando participamos en la categoría High, High School, nos dividen, somos 400 equipos. Y esos... 400 equipos somos agrupados en, en categorías que es ciencia, tecnología, ingeniería, matemática y artes. Observo eh, que, por ejemplo, eh, haciendo consultas y revisando la bibliografía, hay corrientes que manejan STEM más, eh, STEM y le ponen la H de salud y hasta ahora veo que en Purdue solamente manejan STEM. Eh, para nosotros desde el proyecto de investigación ha sido muy significativo desde Pollux, porque tenemos un estudiante estudiando ingeniería química, tenemos otra niña que en este momento está estudiando ingeniería mecatrónica en el ITM. Entonces ha sido un proyecto que hemos podido observar que ha sido significativo para ellos. Ahora, a mí sí me gustaría saber desde Purdue eh, de qué forma de qué forma va a empezar a, a aterrizarse aquí en Colombia y con el apoyo de Universidad de Afid, porque en Itagüí se está llevando a cabo el plan digital TESO, que es un gran aporte que estamos recibiendo porque nos permite unir todos estos elementos de las TIC y la pedagogía de aplicarlo en las instituciones. Pero de qué manera Pordiu va a enlazar con el Afid para permear al plan de Ital Teso y a la institución educativa del municipio de Itagüí. I think that um, I'm here um, because we have an interest in partnering. I'm here because I think that Purdue does not have all of the answers. Uh, EFIT does not have all of the answers. And it is only by working together and trying to develop a shared plan that I think we can work, that we can move forward. 
Um, I think that there are some strengths that Purdue has, and there are clearly some strengths that EFEAT has. And in my mind, that's a wonderful possibility and a wonderful combination. Where that leads at this point, I don't know. I think it depends on the faculty. I think it depends on the uh, willingness of the administration to have us come together. But what I see at this point is that there's momentum, uh, there is interest, um, in moving forward and the conversations that people are having are very rich and um, and it's not a case of ownership where this is mine or this is yours it's more an approach of how can we develop something that will have great impact so I don't think that it is something that Purdue will do, but hopefully it will be something that we all can do together. Ella tuvo la oportunidad esta semana de estar en la Luis Carlos Galán. Ella tuvo la oportunidad esta semana de estar en Itagüí y ver la experiencia de la Luis Carlos Galán. ¿Alguna otra pregunta, alguna otra inquietud, otra experiencia para compartir? Mi nombre es Ana María Ospina, yo hago parte del equipo de Cultura e Innovación de Ruta N y hace tres semanas estuvimos en Pordiú con los profesores y con un grupo de estudiantes de los proyectos STEM que tenemos dentro de jornada complementaria. Eh, pues para nosotros, como saben, Pordiú es, es un gran aliado, no solo para Ruta N, sino para la ciudad y para el país y por esas razones están acá. Yo creo que son muy valederas todas las inquietudes, por ejemplo, de qué cambios debe hacer la universidad cuando de pronto empezamos a generar desde los jóvenes ya algunas habilidades, de pronto mucho más específicas. Yo creo que nunca vamos a llegar, obviamente, a reemplazar de alguna manera eh, cuál es la misión y, y visión de las universidades, porque no creo que dentro de los programas de jornada complementaria, obviamente, ese sea el objetivo pienso que es más de un acercamiento y de pronto de una búsqueda eh, vocacional. Lo que nos han manifestado algunos jóvenes es que a través de estos programas ellos han podido identificar si les gusta o no eh, algunos temas de ciencia y tecnología. Eh, yo creo que en este momento ofrecemos tantos programas a los estudiantes, a los, a los posibles estudiantes obviamente que vienen para las universidades y toda la parte de educación superior, que muchas veces no tienen la posibilidad de acercarse a eh, temas específicos. De pronto, eso es lo que estamos logrando con, con este tipo de programas que llegan a los jóvenes, de pronto darles la posibilidad de eh, entender cuál es la diferencia entre una ingeniería de astronomía o por ejemplo una ingeniería química, cuáles son como los objetivos que queremos lograr en cada uno de ellos. Eh, y la verdad yo lo que siento es que también lo que estamos empezando a desarrollar en ellos es como la posibilidad de conocer herramientas que lo, les permitan eh, buscar más información, eh, tener como unos conocimientos que les permiten cuestionar y obviamente de pronto muchas veces eh, no, por decirlo de alguna manera, eh, tomar toda la información y creer todo lo que se dice. Entonces yo creo que eh, es muy importante que obviamente tengamos estas posibilidades para los jóvenes en la educación básica, primaria y secundaria, pero obviamente eh, cuando ellos empiezan a desarrollar este tipo de habilidades, pues también la universidad tiene que eh, repensar de alguna manera también cómo atraer a estos chicos que ya vienen más de manos en la masa, por ejemplo. Eh, nos pasa en nuestro programa de Innovótica cuando les empezamos a dar toda la parte de electrónica básica, programación en Arduino y ese tipo de elementos que muchas veces cuando entramos a, a la universidad en los primeros semestres, pues no sé hasta cuándo si estamos bajando a manos en la masa y a entrar en los laboratorios desde los primeros semestres que es de pronto como lo que empieza a generarse, o sea, el cuestionamiento, si de pronto en esos programas de jornada complementaria y STEM permitimos que los chicos lleguen a tener manos en la masa, cuando llegan a las universidades, pues lo más seguro es que ellos van a pedir que desde primeros semestres 
esas manos en la masa sigan presentes, toda la parte de aprendizajes por proyectos sea obviamente algo continuo y que les permite pues, seguir desarrollando toda la parte de eh, pensamiento crítico y además las habilidades comunicacionales, más de eh, relación con el entorno y resolver problemas de sus comunidades y obviamente ser mucho más eh, como, eh, participativos obviamente dentro de las decisiones de la ciudad. Entonces, no, pues, eh, ante todo agradecer por estos espacios a la Universidad de Afido, obviamente a Purdue por estar acá y pues a todos ustedes, porque obviamente es un tema de interés para todos nosotros. Eh, buenas tardes. Lo primero que yo quería era agradecerle a la profesora Merian todas las contribuciones que nos ha hecho en estas semanas y particularmente pues en esta tarde y pedirle si me puede ampliar un poco el concepto de la, del componente de representación del mundo como lo tienen dentro del de mapa eh, conceptual del programa. The roadmap is, um, I think this goes back to your question a little bit earlier uh, in terms of if we can build. Um, and what we want to do is we want to build and scaffold um, STEM instruction from the very earliest years all the way through high school. Um, that's very difficult to do when our teachers themselves often have not had the science that is necessary to really be able to um, instruct their children, our children and guide them in a really meaningful way. We know that we need to do more. We know that we need to teach this as part of our uh, preparation of our new teachers. We know that we need to um, make sure that teachers can come back for additional training, professional development, but we also know that teachers are some of the hardest workers uh, and most dedicated workers of anyone, but they often don't have the time to really be creative and to really be able to spend the time to, to really develop um, the quality um, lessons that we think are so important. All of the other pieces need, need to be there, but teachers need a guide and they need a framework. So for us, we think that this is a place where, this is a book where in one place, we help the reader understand what we mean by integrated STEM education, why it is important, um, try to approach it from a, a theoretical perspective, but also provide a lot of concrete examples as to how these concepts and the themes that are included can be taught at any grade level. And there are many suggestions for doing that. Um, in the United States, um, there are many standards that our teachers have got to address. Um, too often what happens is that the teacher will say, okay, we are going to do mathematics now. So we are only going to do calculation problems. And we spend 30 minutes on calculation problems and then we put um, those, that subject aside and we go on to another topic. Um, and then the teacher can say, I address this topic in mathematics, the standard in mathematics. By the end of the day though, um, if they use that particular process, there is no way that the teacher will have been able to address all of the standards that they are required to address. So this is a way, we, I kind of look at it as double dipping, um, but it's really being able to bring the information together in a much more meaningful fashion. Um, can you use your math skills 
to talk about the problem in a community that also requires you to be, um, you know, if you have a community uh, where um, there is a lot of pollution because of a factory, you have a group of students that decide that that is, that is a problem that they want to begin to explore. So first, they find out what's happening in the community. They talk to um, the individuals, uh, their neighbors. Uh, they find out who is sick. They find out uh, what are the problems uh, in terms of the impact that that might be having, having on their ability to grow their gardens, uh, on their ability to um, have a healthy life and they take that information. But then they also have to go and they have to study and examine what um, the uh, research says about pollution. They need to learn the science behind what happens um, with certain kinds of toxic agents. They also need to think about well, how could we address this, pro this problem in our community? Well, in order to do that, the students need to learn to develop a message for not only for the community, but for the politicians. They need to decide how, they need to learn how to speak in a compelling fashion. They need to learn about the democratic process of being, of going to a city council and communicating in a respectful but a very uh, strong manner um, the problems that they see. And it's important for them to have some ideas also from the research that they have done as to how they might be able to use that information to suggest to the city council perhaps some strategies or ways to um, um, decrease the problem in the community. So that is the process that we are hoping that we can begin to use with our students. And because we know that students need to not just learn about uh, things in isolation, no, not even in isolation. We know that students need to be able to build on the content. So by having cause and effect in the first grade, and then having another way to address cause and effect in the second grade, and then in the third grade, it builds on the information, but it's not the same. So that by the time the student gets to the end of high school, they will have a much deeper understanding of not only cause and effect, but all of the other areas that really contribute to that. Um, and they've been able to use their math, they've been able to use their literacy skills, they've been able to use their science skills, and hopefully also to use technology to be able to get at uh, uh, information and use that information to come up with potential uh, ideas for, for solving the problem. Does, does that help? Um, does, okay, okay. I have another question and it's related to uh, the fact that uh, if when we are trying to introduce STEM education in, in high school, in elementary school, uh, one of the key things that I see there is uh, 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 to the, uh, I, I will go back to that develop a way of thinking. And that means that the, the teachers, they cannot um, teach how to solve things, but they have to think in a different way. They have to be able to uh, take the same point of view that the student is using and provide some feedback and help them to find um, the proper way, but it's a different way for each student, because uh, th that means that we, we, we will not provide a general solution or a recipe for solving problems, 
but they need to uh, develop the uh, in the students the capability to approach this the the problems using many different uh, ways of thinking. So uh, that means that we have to change how how we train teachers and how uh, our teachers are performing in in. It will be an evolving process, um, and it will it will take some time. I think that um, teachers will have to feel comfortable um, becoming more of a facilitator rather than a lecturer. I think that um, it will be important for teachers to be able to differentiate. Um, um, inf I, I will say instruction uh, because that's the easiest way to, to, to talk about it right here. But I think that teachers will need to be able to identify that um, it may be that I can present or guide the student using this approach or using this information, but with this other student, I will have to be, I will have to uh, approach it in a very different fashion. So it will be necessary for us to uh, make sure that our students, uh, our teachers have the uh, skill set to be able to do that. One of the things that we do right now, um, I, I think our, um, teachers of special education are much better able to do this because they have to work uh, at many different levels. But we, what we have done and what the Jerry program that I described uh, earlier and um, is also is doing is that uh, throughout our teacher preparation programs, even if it is not special education, we are really trying to make sure that our uh, new teachers leave with an understanding of how to differentiate, who can see the different needs and the different levels of students and to be able to work effectively with them. But it's not easy, and it, and it will have to continue to, to evolve, and it will take time. A mí me inquieta el, el grupo que se idea los problemas, el grupo que, que crea esa, esas rutas, esos, eh, esos retos para estos profesores. ¿Cómo, cómo es eso? ¿Cómo es, esa, es ese grupo? ¿Qué los llevó hacia allá? ¿Sí? Y si tienes algún referente teórico que los, que en el que se apoyen, a mí me gustaría mucho conocerlo. Um, I, uh, I would say yes, there is a theoretical basis. I would also say that I will not be the one who will be able to tell you what that theoretical basis is. Um, the book, The STEM Roadmap, talks about that. It has uh, that information in it. So it's theoretical as well as practical. Um, many of the uh, individuals who worked um, on this project are former teachers, but they're also researchers. And so this has become their, um, their it has become their, their passion, their quest, and it, this has developed because of their experiences as a teacher and also what they've been able to um, develop through their own uh, research activities. So I would have to, because I am the administrator and I'm not the researcher in this particular area, I would have to um, ask you to talk with my faculty. Okay? Yo creo que si no hay más inquietudes, podemos entonces ya cerrar. Creo que Marian nos ha compartido unos conocimientos iniciales para que pudiéramos estar todos como en la misma página y entender cuál es, son, cuál es ese marco sobre el que la Universidad de Purdue está desarrollando todo este trabajo de STEM. 
de ahí pues nos quedan muchas inquietudes y muy de darnos cuenta realmente todo el camino que nos falta por recorrer en este sentido de poder mirar en una forma integral estas cuatro áreas que de alguna manera las hemos venido trabajando muy, muy separadas, eh, en especial pues en las instituciones, igual tenemos unos estándares de competencias básicas sobre el cual se rige, digamos, el currículo de todas las instituciones educativas, pero esta visión integral todavía nos falta muchísimo para poder diseñar y cumplir con los estándares, pero tener un mapa de ruta con el cual podamos empezar a trabajar basados en los problemas reales. De ahí pues, surgen muchas propuestas de investigación y parte de lo que hemos planteado con Merian es cómo empezar a hacer trabajos conjuntos de investigación, cómo podemos tener estudiantes de posgrado de Purdue que puedan trabajar con estudiantes de posgrado nuestros y empezar a resolver y avanzar en esta construcción de estos temas y un poco con la experiencia que ya se tuvo en, con los muchachos de la comuna será de la 13, eh, de, del grupo complementario, exacto. Ya a partir de esa experiencia sabemos que podemos realizar muchos proyectos de transferencia para que podamos nosotros avanzar más rápidamente. Entonces, como la, la propuesta aquí un poco es cómo unirnos nosotros mismos y empezar a hacer un trabajo conjunto desde todas las entidades. Aquí tenemos Ruta N, la Secretaría de Educación, representantes de las distintas universidades, docentes de las instituciones educativas, para empezar a armar una gran red de conocimiento y aprender alrededor de ese tema de STEM, sería como mi propuesta. Marian, muchas gracias por tu generosidad, por compartirnos todas estas posibilidades, abrirnos un poco los ojos en estos temas y esperamos entonces que este sea el principio de un trabajo conjunto más hacia adelante. Muchas gracias y gracias a todos ustedes. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, it has been a pleasure to be here today. Um, I am very grateful for your, atten your attention and your attendance. One of the things I did want to uh, let you know is that there are some materials right here on the side um, that um, you are welcome to pick up and to take with you. Um, also some little souvenirs etc. from Purdue, please uh, feel free. I don't want to take them back with me. So please go ahead and, and take some. And if you have any questions, please feel free to be in touch. Thank you again.